solar cells are a thing, uh, obviously. Um, super popular now. So these are silicone-based ones, uh, but the current way of fabricating them, kind of a complex and like expensive way, they typically involve things like uh, you heat it to like hundreds or even thousands of degrees Celsius, um, and you a lot of times you fabricate them in uh, ultra-high vacuum environments, so it's areas that you, chambers with no air that you suck it all out of. Uh, so these are time-consuming and they're expensive. And so our hope with that we we could make in thin films out of proboscites, basically photo cells, cells that are not only efficient and turn sunlight into energy or power. Uh, but also do this in a very approachable, uh, cheap, uh, and flexible way using very basic equipment such as printers. And so this is a, this is a kind of a big step since it's an early field at kind of pushing towards kind of other forms of energy and maybe finding other ways of going about this. So we are using this uh, molecule called the provoskite, and they're, they're pretty special molecules in that they, they interact with light in a, in a special way. So these materials are actually, they make really, really small crystals, they're, they're nano-sized. And so what happens is that if you make a certain crystals small enough, um, certain properties emerge and they're called quantum properties. And so these small crystals are called quantum dots. And what we care about them for the applications of solar cells is that you can actually um, tune these quantum dots to accept certain ranges of energy. So ultraviolet is one of the highest frequency lights we have. It's, it's so high that we can't see with our eyes. Higher frequency means higher energy. When you actually shoot these off at our materials, they, it's strong. the energy is high enough to pop off the electrons pretty easily. And so we have some interesting uh, properties that happen. So if you hook it up to the proper apparatus, you can generate a current. We know that electricity or a current uh, is basically just the movement of electrons. So when it kicks out those electrons, it moves around through the circuit and then it gives us current. So this is how we turn sunlight into energy or electricity. But they also, what happens in physics is if you kick out an electron, sometimes it'll fall back down to where it used to be. And a special thing happens in physics is that when it does that, it releases sunlight as it does this. So when you kick an electron up and then it falls back down, every time an electron falls, it releases a burst of light. So when we introduce high energy UV light to our molecules, they actually glow. And we talked about how quantum dots, depending on the size of them, you can tune them to different energy ranges. Depending on how you tune them, you can actually make them emit different colors. So right now, the one we mostly work with will glow green if you expose it to UV light. And so to go in further in this theme of like low cost and approachable, we are using kind of just a commercial printer, just one you can buy at uh, Walmart or Amazon, where instead of we're a print, a printer usually has ink cartridges like red, blue, yellow, we remove those and instead we fill them with molecules. We print we print a picture just like you would, you, you print a Google Doc or something, but instead of using black ink, we're using the Provost Guide itself. So we are printing, instead of printing you know your essay, we're printing a solar cell. The origin of where I get the perovskite is I have to synthesize it at the lab. I dissolve it in hexane, so I make it into like a solution. But basically I refer that to as ink. And I just simply just extract it with the pipette and place it inside the ink cartridge. And you pretty much could label it as any color that the printer already recognizes. So I basically use a software that came with a normal commercial printer. So you go to a software and then ask it to print that specific color. So for example, if I place the refillable ink cartridge for like the color yellow, I could ask it to print print yellow and the printer would think it's printing yellow but it's actually printing out the solution you put in the ink cartridge. So it's a kind of way of kind of tricking the printer into doing what you want it to do. He puts the CD in and then we place the substrates on it and so that's something you can just load in. It's okay if it's a little bit thicker and then the printer prints on it with the, with the molecules. The real benefit to this is that you could actually mix different solvents or solutions, you know, um, while it's printing, you get an array of different combinations. You know, yellow and blue makes green, but if you're not printing a picture and you're printing a solar cell, you can put two different molecules together, one for red, one for yellow, and then you can get, instead of a different color, you get a different mixture of molecules, which will give you different properties as a solar cell. So after we print out the films and let them dry, uh, we place six silver contacts, and then I hand it over to Ben so you could do IV and CV testing on them. IV is the current as a function of the voltage, and the CV is the capacitance as a function of the voltage. So that uh, with the, the current as a function of the voltage, as the current increases, we should see the resistance that we're going to get decrease. And then with the IV, we wanted to know how well it works as a capacitor and how well it works when it comes to the current and what it can handle. So we look further into the photo emission spectra using XPS and further study more electronic properties. 
the thin films. Basically take samples before and after they've been tested and just kind of look at more lifetime measurements to add on to the efficiency. We uh, look at the measurements, electric measurements, and we decide which ones are the best option for a solar cell. Energy is an important topic and uh, solar cells got uh, considerable attention in the last years and uh, our research is significant from this point of view because we want to improve the solar cells and this is uh, the key of uh, having uh, cheaper solar cells and also to get uh, solar cells which can be easy fabricated uh, as in this case just to print them. Now that's nano.